also gets at this, maybe what is the biggest paradox of it all, and that is that uh, by almost all accounts, in terms of polling that's done among Muslims in the United States, and that, that when the question is asked, uh, how is it to be a Muslim and live in the United States, that overwhelmingly the response is that this is one of the very best places in the world for, uh, for a Muslim family to live. Uh, yeah. And, and you know, yet. And, well, I mean, I, I, I agree with that completely. One of the people I profile in the book is a guy called Imam Majid, who runs one of the largest mosques in the United States. It's uh, in Northern Virginia. And he has personally persuaded several young men that ISIS, you know, they were flirting with the idea of joining ISIS, basically persuading them on Islamic grounds that ISIS is not doing the right thing. Uh, but he said to me, you know, he couldn't imagine a better place to be a Muslim. And if you look, actually being a Muslim in a lot of Muslim countries is problematic. Think about being a Shia in, in, in countries uh, such as Saudi Arabia, where you're very much a second-class citizen, or think about being a Sunni in Iraq, where effectively you're a second-class citizen, or think about an Ismaili which are, you know, or, 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 or Ahmadis, which is a, a, a controversial sect in Pakistan. They're regarded as non-Pakistanis in the, in the country where they live. Uh, and the list goes on and on. So, you know, you come here, it's, um, you're free to worship and however you want. And uh, no one cares if you're a Shia or a Sunni or Ishmaeli or Ahmadi. Um, and, um, you know, it's one of the fastest growing religions in the United States.